Hi, my name is Cody Hosterman, and today I'm going to be demonstrating VMware vSphere virtual volumes on the Flash Array. So let's take a look. So let's set up our environment from scratch. So first let's take a look at our vCenter. So currently we don't have any VOS providers from the Flash Array registered. So this is something we're going to want to do. Now you can manually add them if you want, but inside the vSphere web client plugin for the Flash Array, we've added this ability directly into the plugin. You can find your flash arrays that are registered and click on register storage provider. Now you need to enter in your credentials to that flash array. And what this procedure is going to do is register both FOSS providers, one runs on each controller, to your vCenter environment. So if we flip back to our hosts and clusters view and take a look at our vCenter, we'll see that both of our VOS providers for that particular array are registered. Now the next step is to create storage policies. Storage policies are what you apply to a virtual machine that dictates the configuration of that virtual machine or the individual virtual disks. So once again you can manually create these or we also have a way of automatically creating storage profiles based on the consistency groups aka protection groups on your flash array. Protection groups on the flash array have things like local snapshot policies, replication policies, uh, retention periods, and so forth. This is a way of automatically importing policies that match those protection groups. So now if we take a look at our policies, we'll see that they've been populated from that flash array. So if we click on one, we can look at some of the details of some of these policies. A policies is a collection of capabilities that you want a certain VVOL or virtual machine to be configured as. This one has some local snapshot policies and remote replication policies. Of course, once he's been created, you can go ahead and edit them, change them, remove capabilities, or add new ones. Now once we've registered our VOS provider and created profiles, now it's time to actually mount our storage container. The storage container is a data store in a VVOL sense, but it's not a physical object. Right? It's just essentially an allocation limit. And for a storage container to be mounted, you first need to provision a protocol endpoint. Once again, these are procedures that you can manually do, script, the variety of options, but in our Flash Array Web Client plugin, we've automated this process as well. So you can see there's no VVOL data stores in this environment. So we need to go ahead and head mount one. So if I choose add a new data store in our plugin, choose VVOLs, I can give our storage container our VVOL data store, in other words, a name. So I'll do Flash Array SC1, and then choose the, the underlying Flash Array I want to mount that from, and the cluster I want to mount it to. This procedure will check to see if any protocol endpoints are provisioned for these hosts. If they're not, we'll provision it and rescan it so that ESX will see it. And then we'll mount that VVOL data store, aka storage container, to both of those hosts in that cluster. So you can see we have a protocol endpoint that's been provisioned. And we also now have our storage container provisioned to this environment. If we take a look at our storage container, we can see it's been mounted to both of the hosts in my cluster and some basic information around that storage container as well. The protocol endpoint that's associ associated with and so forth. Now if you want more than one protocol endpoint, you can certainly do that on the flash array. But there's generally no need to do that. So now let's actually provision a virtual machine. The nice thing about VVOLs is that it doesn't really change the look and feel and procedures that the VMware administrator uses, creating VMs, mounting data stores. What happens underneath though is very different. So let's provision a VM from a template, choose my cluster and my hosts. And now instead of just choosing a data store directly, <clears throat> we'll choose one of our storage policies. These storage policies will then be filtered out by VASA and vCenter to say, hey, what underlying data stores can fulfill that policy? I have one storage container that can. And depending on the policy, I'll have different production groups as well. If I have replication or local snapshot policy capabilities in that storage profile, it'll tell me, hey, what consistency group do you want to put this in? So I'd put related VMs in the same consistency group. Once I've chosen my consistency group or replication group, as VMware calls it, I can go ahead and finish it. So you can see right now, I don't have anything really created other than two VMFS volumes on my array today. So let's finish the creation wizard and see what happens on the flash array. So the first thing that happens when we create a virtual machine based on VVOLs on the flash array is we create a volume group for that VM. A volume group is a grouping that holds all the VVOLs or volumes for that virtual machine. You can see we have a volume group right here. 
When we click on it, we can see we have our config vVol that's been created, 4 gigs in size, and our one data vVol. Now, if we had multiple virtual disks in that VM, there'd be multiple data vVols. So let's go ahead and power this virtual machine on. Now the virtual machine is powered on, what the flash array will do is automatically create the swap vVol on the flash array as well. So if we take a look here, we can see our swap vVol has been created. This is automatically deleted when you power it off. So what else can be done? Well, we can add a new virtual disk. Right, when I add a new virtual disk, it creates a new vVol on the flash array. It adds it to that volume group. So we just chose the, the default options here. And we can see that the storage profile is the same as the overarching VM. Of course, you can change that if you want to. So I'll add that virtual disk. That'll be, that vVol will now be created on the array. If we click on our VM, we also have our vSphere Web Client plugin that will show all the virtual disks to that vVol-based VM and the underlying flash array volume. We'll see this also, that new 40 gig vVol has been created on the flash array. Furthermore, because we have volume groups, because we have individual volumes, we can report on the individual volumes, virtual disks of that VM, data reduction, performance, capacity usage. And we can also report on the VM by looking at the volume group that corresponds to that virtual machine. So we can see performance data, aggregated data reduction, so forth. Right? So you get per VM stats and also per virtual disk stats because of the VVOL architecture on the array. So you don't just be able to configure um, volumes independently, um, but also and via policy and individually re replicate or snapshot, we can also report on them as a VM object or also as a virtual disk. So what else can we do? Well, <clears throat> let's go here and delete this virtual disk. And I accidentally, accidentally don't just remove it, but I delete it. Today, you'd have to go to your backup provider or something like that to restore it. <clears throat> but what happens when you delete a volume on the flash array, even today before vVols? Well, that volume goes into our destroyed volumes folder, where it sits for 24 hours before it gets completely removed. And since a virtual disk in a vVol world is a volume, it sits in there as well. And so our web client plugin will correlate any del deleted vVols for that VM and allow you to automatically restore it back to that virtual machine. Once again, that's a, pro that's a process that you can also automate if you want to. So if we refresh our flash array GUI here, we'll see that that destroyed volume is now gone. It has been added back to that virtual machine. Great. Now let's uh, go ahead and deploy another virtual machine. Right, I'll go add a new vVol based virtual machine provision it to a different storage profile, the same cluster as before, and put it on my same storage container. So it'll go on that same flash array. I'll choose my basic one, one hour local snapshot policy or replication policy. And I'll choose my gold protection group. That's what matches that policy. So once again, it'll create the vVol, create the virtual machine, and add it to the flash array. If we look at our protection groups, the corresponding replication group we chose is where those vVols of that virtual machine will go because it matches that policy. If we look at our other one, we see our other virtual machine has been added to this one as well. By choosing a replication group, you are choosing the consistency group that matches that policy and where those volumes should reside. So then what can we do now that we have two virtual machines? Well, because these virtual disks are volumes, we can use our vSphere Web Client plugin to be able to copy vVols, copy snapshots of vVols to the same VM or different VM. Right, so what I'm going to choose here is first I'm going to snapshot my virtual machine. So I want a new point in time of my virtual disks. So I'll take a snapshot. When you take a VMware-based snapshot, it's going to create an array-based snapshot of that volume. If we look at the flash array and choose the data vVols for that virtual machine, we'll see a snapshot has been created from that snapshot task. And you can see it below there in the snapshots. So now that we have a new point in time, let's go back into that import disk wizard because I want to take a copy of that virtual disk and present it to my other VM. As I said, you don't have to create a new snapshot. You can use the point in time that exists right now of that virtual disk, but I wanted to create a snapshot. 
show you some of the flexibility. So it's going to take that snapshot, create a new VVOL from it, and present it to my other virtual machine. So I've effectively copied my data set from one VM to another. And I can also overwrite it. Right? Maybe I've run some tef dev test operations against it, and I want to refresh my data set. I can refresh it with our vSphere Web Client plugin as well. So now, when we delete a virtual machine, We'll remove the VVOLs, and we'll also remove the volume group if there's nothing left inside of that volume group. So we can see they're on our destroyed volumes. Our snapshots, our VVOLs, and everything is now recoverable for 24 hours. So if we accidentally deleted that virtual machine, it can be recovered, just like the virtual disk before. So VVOLs is great for day zero provisioning, but what about day two? What about making sure my VM is provisioned and stays provisioned the way I meant it to? Well, this is where compliancy checking comes in. So let's say I go to the protection group that holds my VM and I change the policy on it, on the array. I change the replication or the snapshot policy from one hour to two. This now violates the policy I set against that VM and this VM is no longer configured as it should be. I can run a compliance check inside of vCenter and vCenter will say, hey, this is no longer compliant. Either need to go to the array and fix the configuration or we can move that VM and make sure it's configured in the right protection group for you. Either option is valid. In this case, I'm going to go back to my protection group, change it back to one hour, and save it. Rerun my compliancy, and my virtual machine was once again compliant. So this just scratches the surface of what can be done with virtual volumes in the flash array. So stay tuned for more. Thanks a lot.